to Mastery Class. Okay, uh, welcome everybody. I want to get this on the recording. Welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery Class. And uh, we're going to unpack all the news and kind of give you some training on the Crypto Mastery Indicators. And I'm going to talk a little bit about some other things we have going on that you might want to know about. So uh, let's see, how's everyone doing? Let me pull up the chat. And by the way, if you're watching the uh, replay on YouTube or anything, you can always sign up for these classes uh, to join live and ask questions live over at moonstream.io. Okay, so you can find that out on our website. And let's see, I have a, uh, a button here called the annotate button is on. All right, somehow we hit that accidentally. And uh, it doesn't want to go away. So... How about now? Okay, it's gone. Cool. All right, everybody. Well, let's go through some uh, some news. I think the big news is the Mt. Gox is um, selling potentially a lot of their Bitcoin. It's uh, It's been a bit difficult to unpack, and I'll just give you the TLDR on this. And if you've been wondering how this is going to play out, I have a friend, a longtime friend ago, um, from a long time ago, rather, who had 3,300 Bitcoin and quite a bit of um, uh, the other uh, coins there and some Litecoin and all went bye-bye in the uh, Mt. Gox uh, debacle. So uh, I was chatting with him last night. And um, so certainly he thinks that whatever the sell price comes out to, these people will likely sell. Uh, but it probably, as this article says, it won't be as bad as we think because for reasons I'll get into, you know, the cost basis on a lot of the Mt. Gox Bitcoin was around uh, $1,000 and a lot of them had it at 400 According to him, so even if they only got like say ten, twenty thousand price for it, they'd be happy and they would sell. But uh, and so if someone Alex is saying they're only getting four hundred dollars. So this is the big unknown, and I think that uh, this article probably will give us the info we need, and we'll talk about some of these um, other things here. But I've got an article about yeah. So this Malcox redemption overblown kind of similar. So we have Coin Telegraph and also CoinDesk talking about the same thing. So let's start here. And um, although I think that, uh, you know, the sell-off that's been happening probably isn't fully really related to this, so we'll we'll unpack that. I think that's really more due to cycle correction and the timing of that, because these things do go in cycles. And by the way, we are coming out with an excellent cycles, cycle trading course uh, with a friend who is a cycle trading expert. So the uh, timing of these cycles, and it was an interesting video I was watching this morning, uh, who was saying, you know, a lot of this, and I was having, I was thinking the same thing. So I'm glad he said that, that um, these cycles are going to dictate kind of when the tops and bottoms are. And one of the things in this course, which is excellent, talks about there's shorter cycles, intermediate and longer ones, kind of like a sound wave, but the, the peaks and valleys always overlap. So there are cycles within cycles. And what this other person said is that, you know, <clears throat> the cycles are going to predict top and bottom areas. And then a lot of times we, uh, we attribute news or some other stuff to that. And I just wonder how much of that is coincidentally timed and that the uh, bigger players are sort of manipulating that or taking advantage of that. So you certainly don't know, but, um, you know, we also don't know how advanced the AI is because as a quick sidebar, I was met somebody this past weekend uh, and that I had met before. He's a technologist and he was saying in the chat that if you remember Renaissance technologies back in the 80s that dominated the uh, hedge fund space, the first to computerize their trading. Now, everyone said that's great, uh, good for him. He's a billionaire now. But uh, nobody asked kind of how they did it. And he was using some very advanced quantum computing uh, that had to do with sort of where one particle can be in two places at one time. And so when one is here, the other one can't be here. I'm not sure I fully understand it. But if they had that uh, advanced um, technology then and a, an AI beat the most, uh, the best chess player in the world uh, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, Gary Kasparov, I believe, um, you know, we have to ask ourselves, how advanced is this right now? And we are on the verge for qu of quantum computing in the next couple of years. And um, uh, I, I'm going deeper than I wanted to, but this person shared a picture of a quantum uh, computer and, and privately he told me, not to scare everybody, but privately he told me that, because uh, I had mentioned that I heard quantum computing will eventually be able to break the uh, Bitcoin hash and pass keys. And he says, yeah, probably in the next two years. So um, so just park that in the back of your mind somewhere, but that could be a, a problem, you know, and the hacks, uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to scare anyone right now. That's not what we're going to worry about right now. So 
Okay, so let's talk about this. We've, we've got uh, Malcox uh, dumping. We also have the German government. They're saying Alpha is 900 Bitcoin and uh, 400 Bitcoin sent to Coinbase and Kraken. Now, um, you know, that's not a huge amount, 900, but we also have Michael Saylor in here somewhere saying he's going to be buying buying a lot of it. Uh, so, you know, we just have to kind of see. I do think we're up for, we're due for a bounce in the markets here. And... Um, Let's see what I was going to show you guys. Also, is again, if you want to sign up for these classes on a weekly time frame, just go to moonstream.io and go down to the bottom. We have some free resources for you. If you're here live, you already know this, but a free crypto newsletter, which is excellent, that goes out on Monday. And you can sign up for these classes here, the live trainings, and learn about our crypto mastery indicators, which, guys, if you don't know this, predicted the market top a week and a half ago. Uh, that's... Those signals, when they align, I, I issued a major warning to our students and our M3 members. And if you like this class, by the way, check out our M3 Active Trader. It includes our indicators and also has daily access to me and some great traders in there. So just a mini uh, commercial for you guys, for those that you don't know. Uh, and so you can find out more about that here and some free resources at moonstream.io. So, so we also have government officials. We talked about that. Let's talk about Mancock first. And um, by the way, I've been traveling, you guys, and um, invariably on the way home, uh, pick up some kind of a cold on these airplanes, even though it was masked up. So uh, forgive me. But at any rate, let's talk. Let's get through it. Um, Mount got scheduled repayments, 8.5 billion worth of Bitcoin to creditors. So uh, so so basically they're saying probably won't be 8.5 billion. And just to put that into context, though, remember, we had roughly 10 billion of ETF money come in. And look how much that moved the market and eventually got to 20 million, right? Uh, and so, uh, billion, rather billion, so, sorry. And that moved the market quite a bit. So we don't want to see 8.5 billion kind of come out, but that's not what's happening here. They're not going to get the full amount. Um, to finish off the story, though, my friend was saying is that most of those holders, you know, they've been sitting around for 10 years now watching everyone else buy Lambos, buy houses, buy vacations. And and they're like, the hell with this. As soon as I can sell it, I'm selling it. I want to own some of that good life. And uh, and actually, they are rooting for this whole thing to nuke down lower so that they can buy it back lower. So there is that element of that. Okay, <clears throat> so, uh, but let's, we'll have to see. Right now, we're in kind of a bounce point in the markets and the charts. So, um Let's see, too many historical factors here and a concrete prediction about the impact of the upcoming repayments, blah, 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 roughly four and a half billion. So they've cut it in half that it could hit the market in July. And of course, Malagox was the Japanese cryptocurrency exchange that collapsed after being hacked in February, exactly 10, over 10 years ago, just over. And they lost 940,000 Bitcoin worth over 60 Four million dollars at the time now worth quite a bit more my friend i won't i divulge his name but you might be meeting him soon by the way uh he said between his bitcoin and his litecoin and i think his bitcoin cash if he held it he would see be worth 500 million right now and uh, it all went poof uh and he's he's um remarkably uh, centered about it and 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 sort of uh i think that would most of us might be difficult to get over Anyway, um, so Mt. Gox recovered 141,000 uh, Bitcoin to its creditors, which were 8.5 billion. And they're going to start paying that out in July. So that's coming right around the corner. That's just coming up next week. And, um, you know, it's going to be interesting because we also potentially have the ETH ETF getting approved. Some were saying July 2nd. Uh, others saying that might be a little bit later on. Okay. And so uh, let's see. It's just checking the chat here. Okay. There's some links here I'll share with you guys in a minute. Stick around, guys. Got some really, something really cool to tell you about. Uh, potential flood, uh, Bitcoin on the market. Let me just skim through this. We got about six moons, uh, six news articles to get through, and then I want to get to the charts. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and these pay repayments have been coming for a long time. I wonder, I don't realize, I don't understand why it's, they've taken so long if they had them. Uh, I do know that for a while, the there were uh, venture capitalists that were buying claims on Mt. Gox because this person I was telling you about uh, called me about four years ago, said, what do you think I should do? I don't know what he did in the end. Um, and so we'll have to find out. But uh, not all of these, this is why not all of these are long-term hodlers. A bunch of them sold their claims for a reduced amount. Um, you know, kind of like you'll see if you have claims against, uh, you know, an insurance company, you can sort of take the claim now or the lottery, take a little bit now versus versus more later. So anyway, I um, won't get into that too much here. Uh, Sycamore said, and who is this? Sycamore is um, 
uh, who is this? Sycamore. Let's keep talking about Sycamore. It's some kind of a fund. Um, but who cares? So uh, repayments are happening and selling outflows, greener pastures. What did I just see here? Yeah, so they say they have not convinced the current sell-off can plunge too much deeper. So we're hopefully that's the case. I was predicting forecasting rather that 58k would be a great place to bottom i've been saying that for weeks i said if we can't hold 62k and 60k we're going to 58 and specifically 57.5 we had one of our m3 members put in a buy limit order and get filled at 57.600 i believe at 10x leverage so uh, good job on that we uh, definitely are giving some interesting and timely calls over the m3 active trader so if, uh, if you want that uh, make sure to join because uh, you get uh, quite a bit in there so he pointed out strong support on the 200-day moving average. Um, yeah, who? Could, yeah, that's fine. The flood, we just saw a flush. I mean, these things tend to happen. Too much leverage in the system. You know, just remember, this is not in, inherently dangerous for us. Uh, I do want to watch the 58K level because if we lose that, lose that, we could go to 52 and technically still be in a bullish pattern. Now, there's some people projecting lower, but I don't think so. Uh, there is a lot of conflicting data, and so just a TLDR is I would not be all in, I would not be all out in this market, I would be right in the middle, and having some powder dry for if we drop, or if we start going higher and buying into strength, or both. Okay, and so, but some of you, my private clients, a few of you are saying, what do I do, should I sell everything? Uh, some of you have largely exited the markets because of the pattern that I shared, and I will show you now, but uh, I don't think that was it, you guys. I think that... Um, you know, but certainly having half half in cash, uh, when I say cash, I mean dry powder, tether, um, you know, stable coin, et cetera, uh, for whatever comes next, okay? So we'll talk about that when we look at the charts. So essentially, this was a flush. We had a lot of liquidity and also the effect of the expectations of Mt. Gox selling, you know, and with liquidations creates more stop losses and it can become a sort of snowball effect. We've seen this a number of times before and it's only, hasn't been too bad. Hasn't been too bad, you guys, on this one. We just don't want to see it go lower, ideally. Uh, let's see. Yep. So good, good buying levels right down there. Now, if you're wondering how do we know these levels here, uh, we have some great indicators that show us the buy blocks of where people are buying. And let me just get over to a Bitcoin chart rather. Yeah. See this chart here. These are some of our custom indicators. And let me open this up for you guys so you can see it nice and easy. And we dipped right down into this uh, buy block here over on the daily chart on Coinbase, on the Bitcoin and Coinbase. Now, um, it's certainly possible. I, I would suggest we calm down in this range again. And uh, the students who got filled at 57.6, that's remarkable. I wonder what exchange you were on because on uh, Coinbase, it only came down to it looks like 58.4. So um, more than likely, you guys, this is, so I wouldn't be going all in here. I would expect we see some kind of uh, uh, drawing like this where we push up. Come on, you guys, this uh, here. And then we hit the 21 day 50 EMAs and we come down in this range and then we do this kind of thing. That's what I think. Um, but we just don't know. We don't know. Okay, now I can't get this thing to stop. And it's all right. Cool. All right. So basically, that's what we're talking about. Got it? So the reason is here, we've got some sell pressure here. We've got a 21 and 50 a, a day rolling over. And, and so I would expect to come back down here and 57.6 would be a good entry point. Uh, my alert didn't go off. So I'll have to recheck that price. Somebody had said they got filled there. But that's more than likely what we'll see, right? And, uh, and, and there's also some support, like you can see in this region, along this line i think that really needs to come down and retest that's my that's what i think but soon enough we'll be heading back up okay let's go uh let's go back to the news we'll come back to the charts and if you guys have any uh questions here i have a question oh 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 let's see oh oh d buying opportunity uh what does that mean oh oh d maybe that's a typo um i am I'm, i've heard just about everything in trading but let me know what oh oh d is so let's jump back over to the news and um Maybe that means overall something. Trading opportunity. Uh, let's see. Cool. Uh, Galaxy Digital, as we know, as that would be our friend, Mike Novogratz. And um, <clears throat> 65,000 of the 141,000 total Bitcoin stands to actually hit the market. So that's half. And reducing much of the expected selling activity. 
before we correction for Bitcoin Mount Gox Germany, um, yeah, we're already covering that. So let's just go to the next article here. Uh, actually, let me skim through this. Mount Gox creditors likely to hodl. So that's interesting. Uh, the creditors, um, okay, I don't know. I don't know if I believe that because my friend Michael, he's one of them, saying he's like these guys. They have, they've been holding since four hundred. Uh, they want to sell and um, take their money off. But that's just one person's opinion. And he says they think they'll be diamond-handed. But think about it. If you've been holding for 10 years and thought you lost it all and struggled all the way through with money and finances and mortgage and COVID, and now suddenly you've got like thousands of Bitcoin, <clears throat> no, you're going to sell. You're going to sell a bunch of it. I would. Not all of it, maybe. But what would you do? What would you do? Point of the impact of capital gains on tax sellers. Okay, so that's interesting counterpoint. But it's long-term capital gains, unless you're in Canada. I heard they're doing some wonky stuff up in Canada here, and there's some deadline coming up. I have a private client call right after this, so we're going to talk about that. So original creditors uh, receive only 15% in-kind recovery. Many claim holders have notched 140 times gains since the bankruptcy proceedings, right? So they have quite a bit of gains. And the potential selling pressure on Bitcoin cash would be far worse. Many investors never actually bought Bitcoin, only received it due to the hard fork in Bitcoin. That's interesting. Uh, that's interesting. They received it after the hard fork. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Um, okay. So uh, fear and greed, we saw that down to 30 yesterday. And uh, so it is a bit delayed. So, I mean, it's like a day delayed. I mean, there may be real time. It's probably a little bit better, but I, I think it's kind of broken. Uh, it seems seems certainly seems delayed, and it's you know. But at these extremes, this is why we're likely getting a bounce. Mike posted about this the other day, yesterday rather. Thirty fear is usually the bottom, and ninety is usually the top where we see a pullback. All right, let's jump over into uh, this article here. Mount Cox redemption fear is overblown, says traders as ten billion Bitcoin holdings, ten billion dollars concerns uh, draw near, and so. First week of July, again, that ETH ETF maybe, maybe cancels it out, but I think uh, probably, I don't know, my spidey sense isn't working today. I don't, I don't feel, I don't know on that one. I'll let you know, uh, I must uh, be this head cold. Throws off the spidey sense, you guys. Traders believe selling pressure from Maycott, Melcox repayments may less, maybe less severe. We talked about that. Uh, may not be immediately sold by Galaxy and likely held due to low cost basis, you know, um, I mean, sure, there would be a big tax liability, but then they'd have a bunch of money to play with. So I don't know. I don't know. I'd sell some. What would you guys do? All right. Crypto traders say selling pressure from Mt. Gox newly announced repayments could be. We talked about that. This is a very repetitive article here. Let me skim down here. Uh, let's see. 25K Bitcoin from Mt. Gox has moved in the last hour. And this, I imagine, was, but this is old. This is May 27th. So, I hodled, so this person doesn't know, and nobody knows. So I don't know that that article wasn't nearly as good. Okay, um, Bitcoin is still days below seventy k. Just to change the narrative a little bit, days below seventy k are numbered as trader site. Bitcoin swing low as the bottom. Um, you know it's possible, but our cycle trader expert uh, Juan Villaverde is saying probably July twenty eighth or August will be the cycle low. We'll have to see which plays out. But uh, let's see, this article may be a bit old, J June 20th. Yeah, so they were already wrong where they said they would bottom at 63 to 65. We've already gone down to 58-ish. So, um, you know, it's hard stuff, you guys, trying to predict these things. And um, But, you know, we're on the same page, and this uh, buy block here is why we were looking at, too. This is one of our buy blocks. We have the same software. And basically, where are the buyers at? All right, 200-day uh, moving average, last line of defense. We can look at that if we uh, get to that. So, all right, you guys. Also seeing, what's this? Uh, mark my words, who's this person? Inverse head and shoulders. Okay, that's interesting. We want to pay attention to that. I, I do like those simple patterns. That's one of the reasons I called the market top in 2021 after our indicators flagged, because it was a big old head and shoulders, uh, even though I was uh, in a debate, friendly debate with a uh, hardcore Elliott waiver who uh, was pretty good calls. He went for a by shark. He went by the shark, had lots of good calls, a big following, and then, then he was wrong. And he, he said, uh, he said, hey, man, nice job. You were right. But can't be right all the time. Uh, look at this, though. Head and shoulders, you guys. Uh, let's see. 
June 20th, this is a daily chart. Let's jump over that. I hadn't seen that, so it's a messy one. That's a messy head and shoulders, you guys. I don't know if I... If I let's see. They're saying this is the shoulder, and this is the head. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of... It's worth noting. What do you guys think? I don't know. Let's see. We'll look at everything else in, ta in tandem. So what they're saying is that is the shoulder. And we kind of have the head. This is the inverse head. And it's saying that's forming an inverse head and shoulders. But, you know, we'd like to see that, wouldn't we? Uh, for sure. All right. Um, <laughs> are you guys experiencing this, too? These, they, For years, just they, they say, I know I complain about it every week. But uh, for some reason, these trading view indicators, if you click it again, it draws a new symbol. So anyway, inverse head and shoulders right there. Good to see it. You know, it's it's not the best one, but it's there. It's it's there. Uh, you know, some people are also saying the Wyckoff pattern is playing out again. So, you know, where are we in a Wyckoff pattern? Is it the spring? Are we seeing? I don't know. I'm really looking for the fifth attempt on this upper area. That's what I want to see. The fifth attempt, third or fifth attempt generally breaks, as you guys know. All right, what's going on here? Um, Bitcoin below, uh, that's the article. Okay, we're past that. Uh, government of Germany offloading 900 Bitcoin. Uh, that's probably going to be done OTC. I don't know, you guys. Let me just skim this. So we, we can't really unpack this. There's so many variables. And it's kind of pointless to just dive into all this news. It's already happened. What's the point? That's why I don't spend too much time on the news, especially during the week. I mean, and reading it and watching endless videos. Uh, you know, you guys have heard me say a hundred times, show me the chart, I'll, I'll tell you the news. So cascading long squeeze to blame for the slump. So instead of a short squeeze where they pump higher, the longs were getting squeezed. They liquidated a whole bunch of these uh, leveraged longs because everybody was FOMOing in. Um, I won't say everybody, it was a bit even, but they, yeah, I think they liquidated. <clears throat> let's see, let's take a look. And crypto and see what comes up here, you guys. And coin glass, usually the one we use. So I think it's around 100, billion, 100 million. And uh, so let's go to 24 hours. This You can find this too at coin glass liquidation data. Yeah, look at all that Bitcoin that was liquidated in the last 24 hours. 86 million on Bitcoin, 26 million on Ethereum. And uh, so that's about 100 on the long side. But look at this, you guys, 78 million on the short side. So 170 million. That's why leverage trading so tricky they'll move the price around uh, i was out of town this weekend and i had a i had a small margin position in brett token i figured i'd let it ride because i like the chart uh sure enough yesterday they came down and just took out my uh stop loss because i didn't want to put the you know be down here and get liquidated and, and now it's off to the races it's pushing higher here <laughs> so uh that's the problem with leverage you know it sort of really tightens you got to keep your stop losses really tight and often it get we get wiggled out that's why most people day trade or swing trade it uh, unless you've got a big account. All right. Um, let's see. <laughs> David says, all I heard was bull run. Yeah. So let's uh, jump back over to this. Uh, cascading long squeeze. Again, when the longs, when they go short near the top, sorry, when they go leverage long near the top and the prices start falling, they start selling and they start selling and shorting and getting getting uh, on a long squeeze. So that's kind of what pushes is pushing it lower. So, and I've said this a couple of weeks ago, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw, you know, both. If we saw a big push up first and then a big drop or a big drop to liquidate the lawns. And then we have a big push up to liquidate the shorts and then we come down again. This is a, a major battleground. And you have to think of it this way. The, the market makers are going for liquidity because they make the bulk of their money at these key inflection points. And that's why we see these whipsaws and fake outs. Because... Generally, they're losing money. You know, if you're right and it's going up in a bull run and you're leveraged long, uh, you know, they, there's a zero sum game. You're winning, they're losing. And a lot of times they're on the other side of that trade. So, so just keep that in mind that this is part of how the game is played. Uh, because if the exchanges go out of business, you know, what are we going to do? Um, that's going to be tricky. So basically, uh, that's the deal here. Cascading long squeeze speculators kept adding to new long positions, adding more fuel to the fire. Liquidations in a cascading long squeeze. Normally, we talk about short squeezes. 
And I assume you guys know what that means, but if you're short and they're going higher, when you're shorting, you're selling the something you don't own. You're borrowing it and selling it. And if it starts going higher, you're gonna buy it back at increasingly high prices, which adds to the fuel on the upside. So this is just the opposite. I know most of you know what that means, but just in case you don't, and if you're watching this for the first time, uh, if you are watching our YouTube channel, uh, please hit the like button, by the way. Hate to ask, but uh, we're just trying to get the community up. It really helps the uh, old YouTube uh, algorithm show it to more people. Cool. Please and thank you. So long squeeze. We talked about that and uh, we already discussed that. I'll highlight this. You can read this. Let's see. Opposite. Yep. According to CoinGlass, tip below 60K, uh, below 59K, which just happened, it would wipe 1.6 $1 billion in long positions. Let's go back here. Now, Let's see, the bulk of these happened in the last 12 hours, really the last 24 hours, but even the even today, 25 million uh, liquidated on the, uh, uh, look at that, it's a lot of it on the short. So that's why, yeah, see, see that's exactly, let me, let me visualize this, this for you. Uh, especially if you're new to this, I know many of you guys are in M3 and you get it, but so they've been dropping, dropping, dropping here. Everyone, all these long, leverage longs up here just bleeding out, right? And then the shorts jump on here and they're making money and then they're shorting even further here and then boom, right? People are shorting it down here thinking we would break and go lower. <clears throat> Confirmation bias is a dangerous thing. I know there's some rooms I'm, I monitor where they are like, I'm short, I'm short, I'm short. Well, they're getting liquidated now. Um, <clears throat> so that's the game, you guys. That's the market maker game. All right, so uh, they recovered that upward swing. However, similar three percent upward swing would raise two billion in short positions, right? Showing that traders are currently more confident in the price going downward. So they're doubling down on their shorts here, and um, you know it just amazes me. I mean, we can clearly see there's buy uh, buy pressure down in this range, and this is a dead cap bounce. Anytime you see price get this far away from the 20 and 50 EMAs, it usually will revert. So here, big push up, look how high it got up to 21 day It hit the upper Bollinger Band pulling back down. What did we do yesterday? We did the opposite. We capitulated, hit that lower Bollinger Band. So this is one of our proprietary indicators, our Bollinger Band, Bollinger Band Pro. And essentially, uh, you see it's green in the bottom. That means it's oversold here. I'll turn off our ERIs. And part of this is for training as well. So if you don't have our ERI Pro and our Pro versions of the indicators, you can go to, I believe it's uh, cryptomastery.org slash pro. There's a lifetime offer, you guys. These are new. These Bollinger Bands, most people using Bollinger Bands use them wrong. And... Um, with the wrong settings, you can see ours have been excellent. Hit the upper red Bollinger Band, you get a red line on that. That's a take profit zone. A lot of you guys say, when do I sell? Well, you sell some when you hit that upper red Bollinger Band, especially when you get this vertical red line, because look at that reverted back to the mean. And often it gets closer to the opposite side. My good friend Steve Nissen taught me that years and years ago. So up here, we saw a little touch on the upper Bollinger Band, take profit, take pulled back. But up here is really when you saw it, this is a good take profit zone, pull back down sideways, sideways. You can re-enter on these. But um, uh, similarly, when they touch the bottom Bollinger Band, typically that's a very bullish signal. And depending on the uh, market phase where we are, but uh, here, look at that. Look at it bounce so well right off this. Now, it didn't close below that below lower Bollinger Band, but it, it went below it. And, and sure, right away it reverted up. Point is, I think we push up here around 64K, and then this thing goes back down and tests this. And so I'd love to see a double bottom in this 57, eight range, kind of a W pattern or a higher low. If we put a higher low in here, it's also good. Okay. All right. What do our other indicators show us? That's uh, interesting there. I won't turn that on. And uh, the order block detector, of course, our ERIs. We'd also, what we're waiting for, and we don't see here, is our early reversal indicator. So let me turn off the uh, Bollinger Band so you guys can see. See this little green arrow down here? These are so good when our TSI also triggers. And so we saw that a little bit back in this range. But but really what we want to see, and another reason I think we come down another step, is we want to see that early reversal indicator and the TSI going green over 20. That's our secret weapon. Uh, those two. And then, of course, you know we have our RSI. Now, we've got the RSI going green on the daily. So we have one of them, and this is usually a pretty in good indicator of a, of a bounce. It is also showing bullish divergence. Okay, so uh, that's of interest. But we really like to see at least one of our other signals go green on that. Okay, so, 
And uh, so we'll put that away. We've got some other ones in here in the middle and uh, they're hidden, but uh, you get the idea. We'll talk about more of these as we go. Any questions on that? All right, we'll come back to it. Post having minors, capitulation continues. Um, yeah, the miners have to go buy a fancy new ASIC machinery that costs money. And, uh, you know, um, so they sometimes sell their Bitcoin to go buy new machines. Some of them get out of the business. It gets more expensive and harder. So the post having minor capitulation event, which is a theory that miners will turn off their hardware and sell their coins if Bitcoin falls below a certain price. I believe it costs around 40000 to mine a Bitcoin now, somebody mentioned. And so we should be fine. It should be profitable for them. But uh, unless they have to go buy new machinery. All right. The energy costs are one thing. Uh, let's see. All right. Well, this person's saying Bitcoin forecast to 50K before the parabolic run. Um, I don't know. Widely varying, widely varying opinions on that. And, um, you know, we have some couple couples channels we watch and I refer out in the M3 chat. A couple of you are familiar with that, but very, uh, you know, still pointing toward the bullish scenario and uh, on the cycle starting soon in the next couple of weeks in July. OK, so both could play out. Like, how about that? We drop down to 52K, 50K, huge flush out and then just rally like crazy into the parabolic range. So we have to be aware of all these. All right. Uh, June 24th, Bitcoin saw its largest decline in three months. And but it only was down 6 percent. So, you know, we've seen 50, 40, 50 percent declines in bull markets in the past. All right, let's move on for just 50K. Okay, let's talk about this next one, the Bitcoin analyst here, uh, dropping to 50K for the Bitcoin going higher. What do you guys think? Uh, you guys have probably been searching around a bit. What are your thoughts? Let me just research. Let Go up here in the chat here. We've got some links. Good buying opportunity. I see what you mean. Um, you know, that's a, Dr. Tiana. I understand now. I'm sorry. Um, it could be, but I, I, as I'm saying, I think we come back down again into the green zone. And so, uh, all right, don't see any more comments. So basically, uh, 50K before parabolic run, what would cause that? If we lose 58K, if we lose 57K, uh, I think, you know, the 52K range is there. Uh, it's also the midpoint of the vector candle on the monthly time frame, which is something that we can look at. And we do talk about in the uh, M3 classes tomorrow. We go a little deeper. We do trade recommendations in that class. So if that's what you're looking for, more trade recommendations, uh, definitely uh, look into that. And uh, there's a monthly and a quarterly option for that class. And you get the indicators for free. How about that? So um, <clears throat> let's see. Let me skim this. 10x research was uh, double top. And what is he saying? Bitcoin dropped 50K. Okay, so this is sort of an Elliott wave and a uh, cycle. Um, you know, you know in the, if you get into cycle theory, you see a lot of these. This is two cycles within a bigger cycle. So a double top, sure, it could be. And uh, I mean, essentially, it's a triple top from the, back, in, back in 2021. Not what we want at all. Uh, but topic formations have historically left the average retail investor vulnerable with many altcoins experiencing significant drops. You know, we've kind of seen that already. Um, I will say this. We'll talk about it more in M3. But my, my specific advice of lightening positions into a bounce that we may see here because I think, again, that bounce comes back down for another retest. So, <clears throat> pardon me, this, uh, let's see, looks like wrecked capital. Um, showing a pattern that repeats every cycle, kind of a pullback before it goes parabolic, okay? So, uh, you know, kind of an interesting chart and uh, it would put us right on track. I think the big thing here is while many of us were expecting a left translated cycle, it, uh, it's looking more like it's going to stretch out and we have that normal four year cycle, which means higher prices. So an interesting study on video on the longer the cycle plays out and the longer it takes to peak, the higher the peak. So we were in danger of flaming out essentially when we were pushing higher fast and we were lowering our expectations. And so I think I, I was saying 100K, probably 150K, but I don't know that we'll get to the 250K that we projected on the Fibonacci study that correctly projected the last market cycle high. Um, that's a lot. Those of you who get it, great. But those of you who don't, uh, don't worry about it. <clears throat> You'll look up Fibonacci's. Bitcoin tap 62K as, um, all right, we talked about that. And, um, uh, Let's see, arm laser digital growing interest, positive sentiment. Um, yeah, the, there are a lot of 
factors. I, we are covering the news, by the way, mostly for entertainment purposes, because every day it's different. And, um, you know, it will make anybody manic. Uh, there are arguments that the liquidity cycle will start soon. And then all this other noise is just FUD and nonsense, you know, but it sounds like sounds like some pretty good, uh, you know, that old saying that's that's some that's bullshit. That's a pretty good bullshit. Uh, the FUD always sounds super good, doesn't it? And the hype cycle when we get near the top. Uh, let's see. Celsius small business. You know, look, this is all part of adoption and getting through all of the uproar. This is the Wild West. I know you guys get it, but um, we are basically disrupting the financial system we've had for 100 years with with previous disruptions like going off the gold standard, et cetera. But pretty much, you know, this is a new currency. And um, anyway, uh, this is all noise, you guys. Let's not pay attention to it. How are we doing on the time? Probably uh, ran out of time on that, and that's fine. So basically, we've covered the liquidations. Um, talked about this a little bit. While we're here, though, I wanna, I'm want to i going to pull this up before we dive into the indicators. And if you go to cryptomastery.org slash pro, there's a video here. Go watch that if you don't already have these. Um, one trade or avoiding one bad trade can more than pay for these signals. Our new pro indicators are out and they are just, they're amazing. Uh, you're def definitely at an advantage without them. You can buy a, an annual for 497 or lifetime for 1500. And uh, we had said that end of June, that was going to go away. So you got a couple days left on that offer, you guys. So check that out. Uh, the rest of this is, is actually the wrong information. These are the old indicators. Just watch the video <clears throat> and go check that out. Okay, the other thing I want to tell you about, by the way, before we go, uh, we have uh, we are reopening our Retire Rich program, by the way. And I'm, I'm not here to make this into a commercial for everybody. I want to give you guys the tools. You know, you might be saying I'm not an active trader and therefore the M3 probably isn't for me. And But you might say, hey, I'd love some long-term picks where it's basically curated future Netflix, things like, you know, what will be the big winners in the future? Buy some and hold for three, four, five, ten years. This is Retire Rich Inner Circle. And really to apply, you know, we're going to be talking about AI, crypto exchanges, uh, real world assets, DeFi, DPIN. And we do have trade picks in here. We meet weekly on Thursdays at noon in a webinar. So uh, this is for you. If you're a little bit older, don't want to sit in front of a computer and swing trade or day trade and uh, really want to just slowly dollar cost average into the potential 100 X's, 1000 X's of the future. OK, um, for probably for somebody with a little bit larger account that can sit on it longer time frame uh, to find out more. Email us Moonstream VIP at gmail.com. OK, uh, Moonstream VIP at Gmail. Dot com And uh, there is a link in the chat that Myrene posted. Uh, again, this is to give everybody a, a, a place to say, hey, that sounds like what I want. And so you can watch this 30 minute overview about that program right here. And it's at this uh, link, Retire Rich Presentation, Moonstream.io, Retire Rich Presentation. Got my Moonstream uh, Inner Circle hat on. You get a hat also. How about that? But them apples. Uh, seriously, guys, we, we, we've really dropping some serious alpha in there. So again, our Highest level trainings, you know, we have newsletters, which are once a month. Those are great. We have M3, which is more for your swing traders, daily chat. I'm in there every day and we do a Wednesday class. That's more more active trader, hence the term. Thursdays is more of a longer term trader. That's the retire rich inner circle, which we're talking about. We just reopened that after our one year beta program last year where we had some coins. You'll see in this presentation that went up 400%, 500% like injective, uh, a couple hundred, 40 percent. And and those are ones we're still holding. I do give take profit levels on those. One of them hit its biggest take profit level. And that's all covered in this video. So look in the links in the chat. I don't want to make this too long, but I do want you guys to go check that out and have the tools that you need to succeed in these markets because, you know, it's going to happen soon. And uh, it's going to happen quickly. All right, uh, let's do this, you guys. What Anything you want to look at here in terms of charts? I mean, I have been watching the IBIT, seeing the steady downward trend channel, and uh, that's usually a good uh, sort of indicator where things are headed. We're getting a bit of a bounce here on the TSI, our trend strength indicator. But, you know, uh, I, I do often draw like trend lines. I think this probably comes back down 
on our TSI. That is our, our oscillator that we use. And, um, you know, it's really been useful uh, when it coincides with the uh, ERI, which you're not getting here, the early reversal indicator, I don't think. Let me make sure this is on, though. Um, by the way, yeah, these are all part of invite only, invite only scripts. Yeah. So basically we need an ERI down in this range. I'm going to set an alert around $33, uh, let's say 3265 on the IBIT. And, uh, that would be a potential down, uh, jump, a reversal point on the downside. So what did I say? 3365 and no, it's 3265. So, so it, it does seem to be somewhat leading. So a lot of the big institutions are buying the uh, the IBIT. Let me just so on the average true range, that's this other indicator here that you guys can see as going in red. See how it says exit. What we really want to see on the ATR, this is a one, it was a four hour chart rather. We want to go see this go to entry like it did back here. And that's an early sign it breaks into a new upward trend channel. The great thing about these indicators is you can set alerts on any of them. So come in here, ATR, and I want to know when it changes to entry. OK, on the four hour chart and I'm going to say, OK, ATR entry four hour. And uh, I said buy in there twice because that's going to be a good signal on that. OK, uh, and I could also do an alert over uh, trade uh, above crossing up 36. So why not? That would be a sign of strength. I like signs of strength and, and bottoming areas, likely bottoming areas. Oh, so total market cap. We could take a quick look at this. Um, yeah, we have. um it was funny. I was in Miami yesterday with my Uber or uh, my my realtor, rather, looking for some office space down there. And we were talking about XRP. He's an XRP guy. And uh, we pull up next to uh, it looked like an Uber and the uh, license plate said XRP for me. So we had to roll down the window. We chatted with him for a bit. So it's happening, guys. You know, um, I don't know. XRP is certainly taking a long time to get there like uh, Cardano, but maybe one day. Okay, so uh, here the bull flag on the so the bull flag on the total market cap. It's it's you know it did come down and hit this two point two trillion level, which I have been talking about. And if this can rally out of here, the measured move is back up to three point nine trillion. You guys, so we know the old cycle high or the market top was three trillion. I think we'll have some resistance there, but our next stop when we break three trillion is here three point. Eight, seven, six trillion. I, I mean, give or take a little bit, but that's the measured move from this bull flag if it plays out. And it seems that it is starting to, if it can rally up out of this area. So be ready, you guys. Uh, could happen at any time. And uh, okay, thank you, Tiana. Tiana. So um, yeah, and uh, anyone in the M3 here, if you want to she just maybe comment on how you like the M3 program or Retire Rich, uh, always good to get some uh, feedback from the group. So any questions on the total market cap? Oh, David did above. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thank you, David. He's um, been with us for a while and um, good trader knows what he's doing. So um, you can read the comments there. Let's see on the Bitcoin. We talked about the daily. Let's talk about the weekly here. And um, yeah, so two week chart. Now, uh, for those of you that weren't familiar, let me get rid of this little squiggle here. The reason that I called and did an urgent alert on everything 10 days ago, and, and look, we were right, okay? I'm pretty humble. I'm not going to say I was right. I said, hey, uh, I'm seeing the same warning signs right back here. And that was two, 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 three weeks ago, right? And and so when it closed, I, I'm even going into it. I'm like, guys, this is really ominous. We have a bearish engulfing candle on the weekly. We have a bearish early reversal indicator. We have a bearish TSI already read below 80. That's our third litmus test for bear get out and the RSI pro showing bear, strong bearish divergence and a red circle, okay? Uh, the last time we saw that on the total market cap, the last time we saw that was back here at the top. And that's really what I look for and, and Bitcoin. But look at this. We have the bearish ERI, bearish engulfing candle, uh, bearish TSI below 80, bearish RSI. Um, we had not seen that, those four since then. So you guys know, who are in M3, you know, I was like, hey, um, I didn't think we'd see this just yet. But yeah, we, we got real danger signs here. And so... Uh, the reason I don't think it's a crash point is because here's the difference. And I will say the next time we see those four, when we are closer or we are at all time high, uh, it's for me, it's get out. I'm out, all of it, everything. And I'll be telling you guys, and we, even before the weekly close, 
that is our objective. That's what we did last time. And uh, I think we'll nail it again because nobody else has these signals. And, 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 and that's true. This the ERI is, is really an early, hence the name early reversal indicator. We didn't know what we had until we sort of reverse engineered it. But I believe it uh, it flags. I, I call it velocity, but I think it's uh, it's showing programmatic trading at the uh, institutional level because it happens fast and it has a lot of volume and it happens within three time periods. Uh, I won't give you the secret formula, but we stumbled onto it and uh, looky there. So one, two, three, four, out. We're out for now. I think it's because it's retesting the old all time high. I think this this actually is pretty normal, and and we'll talk about this more in M three uh, uh, tomorrow. So we see this every market cycle, kind of struggling, uh, like that other chart that we looked at. So once we get above and close above seventy two k, I mean for me preferably seventy four k, but a, a close above seventy two k on the weekly, yeah, we're looking pretty good. I mean, still potential for some fake outs. But uh, I think that's where we, we're, we're ready to get back in. Question is, how low do we go? We've got that. Now, the reverse head and shoulders looks a little more clear on the weekly. Uh, and that's probably what that chart was, and I just couldn't see it. So it, it always pays, you know, to look at different time frames because you can see things a little bit more clearly. As we draw it here, yeah, I, mean, I can see that. That makes sense. So that's cool. All right, um, let's see, tool two, barely holding two trillion, David says. Let's take a look at that. <clears throat> uh, guys, I'm getting a wicked sore throat here. Wish me luck. Uh, these planes, they're, they're, they're sick camp, sickness camps. I had a mask and everything. Okay, so um, yeah, the problem with total two is, is that I hate to redraw, but look at that, it's breaking. Total market cap, excluding Bitcoin, so we can see a deeper sell-off in alts if this can't hold. Now, the week is not over yet. What we'd want to see is this turn into a green candle, this wick back up in this range. So let's watch uh, watch this, and I'm going to set an alert on total two. You know, the wick, lower low, though. We don't like that. It's, it's barely holding a trillion, as you said, David. And, you know, part of the reason is that there's just, there's so much dilution in the altcoins because there's a bazillion of them and a lot of that liquidity has left and gone into the meme coins so we have to remember that and um so there's just not enough in the system without a liquidity injection to run these up okay um bread token is running i issued a buy in that earlier today because i think this has the backing of coinbase and since you know binance chain has bnb you can buy the bnb token but um brett um coinbase doesn't this is kind of their uh their version of their own coin so this is a degenerate day trading layout but by the way our indicators do work very well on these and now that i'm back in town um you know i, I gave oh violated the cardinal rule i went out of time uh, out of town with a leveraged long on uh brett token and uh, with my stop loss right in here at 13 cents. Looky there, look what they did, those sneaky bastards. They came right down in here. Uh, that was my stop loss, not my liquidation. My liquidation would have been down here, but then I would have been out of that. You know, you never want to like risk that. Uh, well, there, what I will, when I say never, this isn't the time or place for it. In M3, we're going to be dabbling with some margin swing trading. Um, there are times <clears throat> when you can do that, but you just don't want to risk more than $1,000 or so. At any rate, on back in the trade, it's hitting a sell block up here. I see, you know, we're getting a bit of overbought on our indicators. Um, that's not the point. The point is that uh, this thing looks good here. And um, this is not an indication to go buy it. It's just, um, you know, the the it's up 15%. The rest of the market's weak. It's got a bear, a bull flag breakout uh, happening. Uh, my measured move on that is, you know, potentially 300% or 3x up to <clears throat> 68 cents. Did I bet the farm? Nope. Uh, but we have TSI uh, is going green. We have an RSI green. Where's my um, Where's my ERI Pro? And didn't get the ERI Pro, but what else is looking good here, you guys? 21-day EMA. Riding that 21-day EMA. Love it. That's what love to see this. And and technically, we had a bullish engulfing candle yesterday. Um, yeah, too bad I was flying. That actually looks like a rocket, you guys. Let's talk about the rocket for a second. How many of you guys like the rocket signal? We finally got that thing coded. 
Uh, and um, let's see. So the rocket. Let's jump in here. I think that's a rocket, you guys. That uh, that's one of our favorite indicators. If you're if you're here and you're new and you haven't seen that before, it, it is reason enough to buy the indicators just to get the rocket on the launch pad because uh, looky there, I knew it. <clears throat> So basically, this is a pattern I've been watching for years, and we finally coded it using ChatGPT, by the way. That was uh, pretty cool. And um, essentially, when you see this kind of a pattern where the wick goes below a 21-day EMA or a 50, and you have this little tail here that looks like a fuse, and the rocket is this part, and that's the rocket fuel. So now the ro there's not too much rocket fuel in this one, so you know uh, I don't know that it really goes that high. But here's something we could experiment with here. I'm going to be watching. I can already tell. Let's make it a two-day chart. That's a big old rocket then. Uh, oh, no. All right. Now I have egg in my face. But it's not on the launch pad, which would be that 21-day EMA. My bad. I was trying to combine these. So anyway, uh, the point is, uh, rocket on the launch pad. This, this should shoot up here a bit. Probably get some resistance up here about 1935. I think that's where I have my take profits on uh, set up and on trading on MEXC. I believe. So I'll take some profits and I'll just trade this on this. But uh, point is, um, yeah, we've got enough of our signals firing. Now, let's see. How many of you, how many people do we have here? How many of you are familiar with the trade success checklist? And um, <clears throat> I'll let you guys answer there because otherwise I'll pull it up here and then we can look at some other coins that look good. Ooh. And so well, let's talk about our radar, by the way. The radar, our multi time frame radar was designed so that if you see all red, you're out. You're not getting in the trade. And uh, specifically, we created that after the 2021 high because, um, you know, we had our, our December pick in the Moonstream newsletter was Rune. It was up 157% in two weeks. We were pounding the table. Guys, you got to get on this. And then what happened? Uh, the market topped and, and everything tanked. And we had people saying, hey, you know, we thought this was going higher. We're like, you know, we can't, you should always have a take profit and stop loss, trailing stop loss or take profit. But, but I get it. People don't always do that. <clears throat> so we invented the radar. I say we, Joe, our, our fabulous programmer partner. So basically I said, Joe, can we have a multi time frame signal where it's really clear? So what is this based on? It's based on a smooth uh, modified stochastic, which is also what the trading algos, most of them use. You don't need to know this. All you need to know is if it's all red, get out or certainly don't buy. So helium here, don't touch it, not for the 10 foot pole. If we were back here, I'd say time to sell helium. If it's still partially green, can go higher. So that's another one of the indicators that you get with the Crypto Mastery Pro indicators. Uh, let's see. Uh, David said, yeah, more rockets. Uh, I, I am talking to Joe still about a scanner. We do have a scanner, by the way. You get this as a bonus. Um, currently, it has the RSI and the signal only. I'm going to see if he can add in the rocket, and it's only for your top eight coins. Now, they all look terrible right here. Near, Cardano, AVAX, Sol, XRP, Litecoin, ETH, Bitcoin. Um, and you can modify these, go into settings, so you can put your top uh, views in there. And just, just while we're in here, then let's see, is there any? are there any that we'd like to see that might be uh, positive today? Uh, I don't, I guess we could do Brett token. Let's see. I'm not a big fan of the, the Cardano. So let's see. Let's see what, what comes up here, what they say about that. Now, this is the futures, but let's see. Um, yeah. So Brett says RSI good, and but signal not good. All right. That's fine. Um, just showing you that. But I mean, I'd love to see this as RSI signal, TSI, ERI rocket, right? And be able to set alerts on that. That's where this is heading. It's just not very easy to do. Uh, but we are working on some uh, scanners, you guys. Um, bear with me. Any questions, you guys? And I see a couple more. I've seen one of your videos explaining the checklist and like it. Okay, thank you, Paul. We can pull it up and use it. You guys can get that, by the way, at our um, moonstream.io website. And I'll go grab that. Uh, because cause that's really, we've made it uh, checklist easy to win at trading. And um, And I know that's saying a lot, but I mean it. If you'll follow those checklists and keep your trade at above a three or four on the success um, and start selling, take profits at the Bollinger Bands or at these order block areas. I know it sounds too simple, but that's pretty much it. And it's really good. 
So um, I will. Uh, so, OK, so, Paul, yeah, if you would like to go, the link is above. Go check that out at CryptoMastery.org slash pro and just watch the video. The rest of the page is outdated and I haven't updated it yet. So ignore all this other stuff. In fact, Myrene, if you could just hide all the the what they get, because this is for the, the, the old version of the indicators. Uh, but the video explains all. And then uh, you can find out more on this button here where you can buy those. Um, I, I can't recommend them highly, highly enough. Um, what is it? Penny saved, penny earned? Uh, you know, lots of mistakes we can make in trading. And many of them we have solved with these overlays. You know, I no longer buy in uh, in when I, I no longer buy in a red sell order block. I always wait for it pull back to a green sell order block. And I no longer buy when it's outside of the Bollinger Bands, you know. Now, I, I'm waiting for this tightening Bollinger Band, and I want to see an ERI and a TSI at least. But, you know, with that all red radar, that's, the, that's like a red alert. That's a no-go no matter what. Won't do it. Why take a chance? Like Joe says, let the cake bake. Let the trade come to you. So uh, let's look at mobile phone or mobile. Um, you know, and look, guys, I, I will just say this. I, I, I got this wrong. I really liked Helium and they blew it. They rolled out a mobile phone deal with Mint Mobile's carrier AT&T and they just alienated the whole community. I, I think they something will come out of it, but um, you know, my Helium miners turned off. What's the point? You can't mine Helium tokens anymore. And mobile is certainly sold off and that's disappointing. So best we can do, have a longer term time frame, <clears throat> and... I would say that we want to wait for it to start breaking out of the trend channels. So, but, but, you know, to buy anything down here, I wouldn't be buying, I wouldn't be dollar cost averaging. This is so screwed up. Trading view, if you're listening, I know you're not, but they really buggered this thing. Uh, the pointer. Um, so, so, you know, look at all the overhead supply here. These are people that are selling. They bought here, they bought here and it went down. They just want to get their money back there. People bought here, it went down. They just want to buy their zero. We'll see more bleeding on mobile. <clears throat> um, David, if you have a bunch of it and depending where it is, you could sell some, but I wouldn't sell all of it because then invariably it goes up. Uh, so that's really all I can see there. It's just an ugly uh, chart. Uh, all right, let's do this. Uh, Paul, uh, Educators Trading View, watch that video a few times to learn how to, yeah, to watch that. And that also shows how to add these appropriately because um, if you're dragging any of the indicators from below onto the chart, make sure, I'll just do this here so you can see it. Make sure you merge all scales over to the right. Okay, so let me show you how that works. Go up under here. And, um, and by the way, periodically, Joe will push out updates. So when he does, what you need to do is delete the indicator like I just did. And you want to save the page, right? And uh, refresh the page because that will load the new version. Because otherwise, you're not automatically getting the new version. That's just a trading view thing. And then come under here, invite only. And uh, I'll go down to the Bollinger Bands. <clears throat> so there. And so I believe there was a new version with the alert. So now I'm going to click and drag it up. So now it's on the chart. But the problem is if you, if you, it's not going to stay with the numbers. You have to go over here. You'll see these numbers appear when you drag a new one on. Right click, merge scales on the right. There you go. Now it stays with it. Got it? All right, beautiful. Uh, so let's see, let's actually do that. Uh, the trade checklist, I can never remember the uh, URL, my what is, if we have it the direct to it, it's uh, moonstream.io free checklist. Maybe that's it. Cause that comes up. Uh, there we go. I got it right this time. Moonstream, moonstream.io free check. Just go to our website though and give us your name and email address and we'll send you the latest one. Okay. So here we go. Um, now you may have to click on the box if it doesn't show interactive, uh, you may need to, you'll need to download it. So here I'll download this. And then you need to typically in Windows go up here and open the PDF version to get interactive. So there we go. Okay, look at that. Interactive. So what you're looking for to start out with is you're looking at your charts. And uh, let's find a good one. And um, let's go to a daily. Let's find another. And what's another coin, you guys? Somebody said BAT. Uh, 
Perry says, isn't looking terrible on the radar, right? It's not, but it's in a cell block, Perry. I would not probably buy this. Um, I'll, although, let's see. I'd want to see an ERI. Yeah, it's it's not ready, though. <clears throat> Excuse me. ERI, at least. It's in a cell block. I think this comes... The radar does look good, though. I, I won't lie to that. But um, really, for this, I'd want to see all green on the radar. And uh, what's interesting is sometimes as soon as that last one goes green, you'll see pro programmatic buying happening right away, especially on the smaller time frames. But we have TSI about to go above here. If you like BAT, set an alert above 20. And um, the uh, the signal line also green. That's good. But it's it's not it's not really looking good here. A lot of sell pressure up here. Not yet on BAT. Uh, if you're in it, you know, you could dollar cost average, but a lot of these, uh, don't try to catch a falling knife, you guys, and uh, there's a lot of those out there. And it's not a really good time to be buying. I mean, I, I did buy some Brett and uh, SPT, but that's a dead cap bounce. I mean, really on these, you want to see them adding up uh, on the, so let's go back to the trade success checklist. That's really what I wanted to show you. And uh, go over to this uh so this watch list. So crypto mastery. Let's go over to crypto mastery, and so we've got Bitcoin. Let's take a look at Ethereum. Um, a lots, lots, of kind of a messy chart. So let's not go to Ethereum, and let's look at Solana. Solana is doable. All right, bear with me. I'll clean this up for you guys. And so, what do we have here? <clears throat> Pardon me. So we have a buy block down here. And I'll hide the Bollinger Band because it's not really teaching us any, telling us anything there. We've got a sell, we've got a sell block here and a buy block here. And so that, what I don't like about that is typically that will drift back down and retest. So I wouldn't be buying here. Okay. Um, only one green on the radar. And this really strong support line now may be a resistance line. So, um, I don't see any better way to draw it that that makes, makes it look good at all. We are losing a very strong support zone on Solana. So, however, look at this big, strong buy block down in here. This is where I'd be wanting to buy it, 123. You know, when you're not sure about things, then you should be setting your buy alerts. Just say, all right, hey, I look, I, this looks good at 120, below 125. That's what I like. Uh, okay, David, we'll see you soon. Uh, you're a mobile hodler. All right. Yeah, please share some of your wisdom in the M3 chat. How are we doing on time, you guys? I want to keep this short here because I know you guys are busy. I'll just do a few more. We'll look at some fa fast movers. Uh, I don't know how long people are in class at the moment. Let me just see. My little menu sort of disappears, but the participant menu. Uh, let's see. Where is it? Here it is. 20 people here. All right, cool. Well, um, if you guys, I'm going to have to start calling on some of you. And how many of you are in or not in any of our courses yet? our live trainings. And um, so just to give me a gauge and then uh, let's jump over and look at some of these coins we've been watching. We were watching Pendle. We were watching Metis. What's Metis doing? Metis, big bleed out. Um, you know, at some point we'll probably say we should have, could have, would have bought some Metis. We were saying that after this run up, but, um, but this is not looking good. You know, we're in a downward trending channel and that's kind of litmus tests right here. No go. Okay. We'll come back another day. Let's look at AVAX. All of these looking bad. Altcoins bleeding out. Downward trending channels. All mostly red on the radar. I wouldn't be buying any alts right here unless down near. Someone did post this morning in M3 Active Trader. I just said I wouldn't. And then I said I would almost buy this one. So you have resistance here. Flip this support. Buy blocks in this range. But, you know, um, what else do you see, you guys? It's a... It was a nice uptrending channel that is now broken. Let me turn off our indicators. You know, look at the macro indicators first. And if you can't, you know, if you see this sort of thing, and then we're, we're, you know, we're not in an uptrend, you guys. So that's the thing. Trend is your friend until it isn't. So you got that. And, but now it's breaking. Nothing bullish about this. See that? Till that reverts, until you break out of that trend line, trend channel, no go. All right, so let's see. Let's see if we can find a good one. Injective, I injective, I did like the terrible timing though. I bought it last week. Big old rocket here on the twenty-one and fifty EMA, and then boom, big old order sell block. Uh, you know it's so hard sometimes, you guys. But this was a good old-fashioned fake out here. 
on the alts. And, um, you know, I back back down to $20. I like I and J. I may buy some more down here once to get another bounce. But I, I keep dancing around using our trade success checklist because I'm trying to find one that actually looks good. Uh, anything you guys want? What else? All right, Paul, looking at the M3 or the monthly newsletter, not sure. Yeah, the monthly newsletter is it's it's really challenging because on the coin pick, what looks good one day, new information equals new decision. So much can change in two weeks and we don't really have, you know, in the long run, it's it's worthwhile. Mike's done some great picks. It's just uh, we don't really have the ability to say, hey, wait a minute. Uh, don't do that. It doesn't look good now. Whereas M3, we're in here every day. So let's do this. Let's do, I want to, let me jump over the crypto hot movers. And trading view, there you go. And uh, let's see, coins here. All right, so um, typically with these, I look for ones I at least are aware of because a lot of them are shit coins and they're just pumping, you know, 60% on this. The rank is 149. Popcat, never heard of it. Let's see, I could be wrong. Go over here to super charts. Looks like a meme. And yeah, I mean... So, so the, the chart doesn't look terrible. I just don't have, you know, the volume is non-existent. So be careful with these. And strictly from the chart standpoint, I'd almost use it as an example, but I, I want to give you guys a reliable one. And I also don't want you guys going out and buying any of this stuff. Uh, Brett Token, look at all the meme coins running. Brett Token up 25% today. Um, you know what? I'm only going to show this, I think, because the chart is worthy of it. And... I may already have it open also. Where is it? And uh, daily, daily. Sure. So I, I don't want it to seem like I'm I'm pushing this to you guys. Yeah, I, only for charting purposes. Where's the ERI? But I don't have an ERI on this. Is this a daily? Okay, that's not a good candidate. All righty. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well... Yeah, rocket and uh and the thing yesterday. So, um, we, what we do have, I guess we could use it. So, what we have here, we don't have the ERI. I really like the ERI, this green arrow and the TSI. That's my staple, usually my go-to. However, this works. So, you guys tell me what else? Uh, what do we see here? Well, we have a recent rocket. I'll go with that. We also have an RSI going green and a TSI going green above twenty. You know, we usually like to see these coming all the way down off the bottom and up. So, but since we're, you know, short on time a little bit, let's just do this. ERI, we don't have an ERI this uh, yet. Is the TSI green and above 20? Yes, it is. See that? That's the TSI. And as a signal line, do we, I don't have the signal line on there yet. Let's go ahead and add that. And uh, let's see, which one is it? Do I have it here or no? Uh, I'm not sure what happened there. Let's add that. So all of these are on your invite only. Now, these are all different indicators. So, by the way, if you're like, why are there so many? Each one's measuring something different. So, it's all about confluence. All right, signal line, red. It's not green, but it's turning. So, that's a no. All right, we're just looking for two or three of these to check off those signal lines. No go. Is there a bell, a key and a bell? Now, that's our longer term trend indicator. And let's go ahead and add that. And let's do this. The trend pro. Where is that thing? Here, down, down, down. Uh, sorry, guys. It's uh, It reverted out of there. This is the way to find it. Trend Pro. So this is the one that looks like Mario Brothers. It's not quite there yet. Uh, we need, we're looking for a key and a bell. So it's just setting up. So this this may not be a trade that we would take on the trader success checklist. Because sometimes we're at a three or four by now. So this is a no-go. Has the trend indicator showing a bell? No. Has it started to go green? It did start to go green. I'll give it that. Uh, is there bullish engulfing? No. Is there a candle body at support? Yes. Uh, and it's above the 21 and 50. So there we go. We've got two of those now. And let's see. So that's good too. And so we're not looking too bad here. How are we? We're at a four out of 21. So that's that's enough for me to take a trade, a small trade, and then start adding to it. Is the price above a support trend line? Um, not really. I, I mean, I, I I don't stretch on these. Not really. So let's see, price breaking above resistance. Um, yes, actually. So there you go. So when sometimes, you know, you forget like, oh, yeah, look at that. I forgot to look at that. Come on, you guys. Um, 
I have to call Trading View and, and tell them that they completely buggered this thing. Uh, maybe I need to hit the alt button or something. I'll play around with that. Sorry, breaking out. Um, bear with me here. So basically here. So now we have um, the, what would I say? Uh, above the price above 21, yes, rising support. Uh, no, but it's breaking out of a trend line resistance. Now we're at five out of 21, you guys. This is a trade I would take. Uh, and I did. Um, so not to have confirmation bias, but but that's why it looked good to me. Uh, vol index, this is usually good on the one hour, four hour. Won't look at it right now necessarily, although we could. And, um, you know, on the four hour, it is up above here. It's on entry on the ATR. So I like that. You know, this becomes an art and a science. First, I would just start on the one time frame, like daily. Here we had a rocket yesterday. I'll give it that. I'll give it that. The rockets are rare enough. Do we have any buy blocks on the ERI Pro? We don't. That's muddy flow. We love those, but don't have that. Has it pushed down below the uh, the Bollinger Band recently? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I think I have that turned off, but I I don't. I don't want to grasp its straws. So that's a no. But right now we're in the trade. Okay. So again, if you like what you see, uh, just go over to cryptomastery.org slash pro to get these. Uh, there's other setups here, you know, the three inside up. There's all green radar. We don't have those. Uh, the dynamic true range on the four hour is red, uh, is green rather. I like that. And um, so, so you see now we're at a seven out of 21. I like that. And it's kind of forming a new uptrend after a downtrend, isn't it? So uh, once you see it, you can't unsee it. So let's do the downtrend here. Uh, where did this thing go? <laughs> uh, parallel channel. There it is. Should be in my favorites. So that's a downtrend, but now it's kind of starting a new one, isn't it? Not rocket science, you guys. You guys can do this. Um, on the bearish side, um, it, you could start getting negative trades, and this can also reduce your bullish trades. So, you know, are we hitting resistance? No. Do we have all red radar? No. On Helium, we do. But if we were on Helium, I'd say, oh, and if you click that, it'll reduce your trade score. Okay, so it's good to go through these also. Uh, and three inside down, no Bollinger Bands, no advanced setups. Um, you get the idea. Okay, any questions? Um, I see a couple comments here. We'll go back to the charts. Let you guys look at these here while we go through that. Fear and greed finally dropped to low. Yeah, Mike was commenting about that yesterday. Fear and greed at 30. Generally, that's a bounce point. And, um, you know, um, I actually shared within the M3 trader. Let me find that for you guys. Shared that uh, earlier or yesterday. It was yesterday, I believe. Hold on a second. I got to do this off screen. Some of it's private here. And, but, um, but yeah, in the M3 Trader, you get kind of private access to me and the group and this class, of course, but also our Wednesday class. But here's the, uh, what was I showing you? Um, hang on. It was right in here. Yeah. So basically, fear and greed. So essentially, uh, this is the deal. And we can enlarge that when it's at 30 out of 100. When did that last happen? Back in September, October. By the way, in Retire Rich, we were buying heavily in the AI down in here, injective and um, Lido Finance, a number of these in our portfolio went up, performed very well up in this range. And that was at 30 out of 100. So we're at 30 out of 100 right now. And uh, conversely, uh, you know, these these things, um, here's another one that we shared, the crypto fear and greed. So yeah, it's at 30 as I shared, but, but when they get up to 90 also, that's when they typically uh, revert. So Anyway, very active community, as you can see, in the M3 Active Trader. So uh, you guys get daily access if you ever need it uh, in there. So highly recommend that. And also Retire Rich. There's a chat room for both. So anyway, um, what else, you guys? Let's see uh, some chat. I am in this. You're coaching, looking at the M3. Yeah, Paul, thanks. Uh, and the monthly newsletter, not sure. Yeah, M3 is really sort of on the ball um, every day in there commenting all hours just at the right times not overwhelming hopefully so leaning into which program best for me dr tiana says this one possibly private sure yeah i i mean the timing is good i i did think we would be i'll admit when i'm wrong i really thought we'd be over 100k by now and pushing higher that was my thesis but you know we just can't predict the economic uh, and the uh, risk on assets uh, get suffered they suffer when they start talking about uh, interest rates and bad economy and bad numbers. And, you, you know, you can't help but think 
all of it's manipulated and we're just a bunch of fleece. We're fleecing the lambs. Uh, they're fleecing the lambs and we have to do our best to kind of be one of those. I used to say a flea on a big dog who's running. Um, but lately, um, one of the sucker fish on the shark, you know, or the whale rather, that's whales going that way. We're going to suck onto the whale. Um, you know, I don't we'll do whatever works, but um, certainly it's a highly liquid environment and um, staying in tune is important for the next phase of this. Let's see. Somebody saying, Andy, uh, what is is this a coin? Uh, let's see. Optimism I can look at. I missed a couple here. I used to be optimistic on optimism, but sheesh, that really, uh, let's just say, wet the bed. And um, along with the alts. But, uh, you know, that's why we draw these trend channels, you know, and it's really have to be vigilant in selling when they break out of break below them. Because this was should have been when we were out of optimism. This is actually when I was getting out of it uh big cell pressures here boom 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 so what are we looking at here on here on optimism rather i'm still not very optimistic on this um daily rsi so let's just do our account on the trade success checklist though i uh, not much uh let's see tsi red we've got a little bit here on the rsi but sell block over here i would buy here's what i would do optimism i'd buy it at a dollar fifty Right in the sweet spot, I'd be accumulating at dollar fifty, and not not going all in, but just in. There's two buy zones down here. This is the name of the game: dollar cost average. And then I like to buy into strength later, like when when it, if it comes back up over these. But just keep that in mind that this the alts are really saturated, and you know, as money's flowing into the meme coins, all these degenerate meme coin builders are um, just having a field day. Um, so guys, I'm going to wrap things up pretty soon. My throat feels like I have razor blades in my throat, but let's see, uh, you guys chatting and David saying our retire rich is the best. It's my favorite of Moonstream's offerings. Thank you. I've been a member of retire rich for all of last year and just renewed, uh, and, uh, for two years before is M3. Okay. That's great for David. Thank you. Um, actually that would be good to kind of take a picture of, but, um, you guys, Let's see, what am I doing here? I'm trying to grab something that I can't grab. The, um, oops, don't do that. And Myrene, can you grab a screen shares back? Okay, uh, let's see. My, my computer's glitching out a little bit. What, uh, what else is on your mind? I will get through the existing questions. And here we go. Okay, so total two went down. BAT, we talked about that. Optimism and lean to which program, XRP. I'm not inclined to go over to XRP, but why not? Okay, XRP. Yeah, it, it's just the pride. I don't know. You know, they, they're beating all the suits. They've got all this exposure. They've got all this good news. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I am not uh, interested. It's dead to me until it's up in here, up in above 50 cents at least. But so it's just bleeding down. Now, maybe this is an area to start accumulating, but I don't see any buy blocks. Uh, my heart goes out to the XRP army. You guys have been holding on, holding on, holding on for a long time. And I don't understand either why it hasn't gone. We were talking about it. I, you know, maybe they're trying to like uh, force it down or keep it down. I can't think of the right term. But so what I would do is set alerts on this, okay, above, let's just say it has to clear these. So XRP, reasonably, you want to see it above 60 cents, you know, until then, you don't talk to me, XRP, call me when you're above 60 cents, boom, and then look for the trade success checklist. That's it. You know, you have to be emotionless with these. Sorry, I don't have better um, news. Uh, let's see, Andy, barnacles on the whales. Yep, Terry, there you go. Uh, I like to my, think of myself as a little bit more of a barnacle, a little more nimble. Leslie saying, yes, love our, our IC. And great. Okay. Well, thank you uh, for everybody. And so if you have any more questions, um, you can watch the recording. We're here every Tuesday and not much going on, but, it, you know, the summer is kind of feeling a little slow. But, you know, uh, we are coming down to a cycle reversal, though. I just don't think that's it yet. I don't think we're fully out of the pain. And so be real careful. I'd have some pounder dry. Go on vacation. You know, don't sit here and force trades. 
uh, and certainly check out Retire Rich. Uh, and, um, you know, our portfolio, uh, it, here's the thing with that. Our portfolio's done very well. And if you go watch that video, there's really been two big times where we were buying. It's not every week. We're like, okay, we're doing, we're talking about um, what's coming. What are these new, um, you know, things like crypto cities and a real world a tokenization of real world assets. What's the next phase of all this, you know, five years, 10 years down the road. But um, there are times when the market's ready at an inflection point, the cycle is ready where we'll be like, Boom, here's five or 10 that look good. They all happen kind of at the same time. I know the markets have sold off, but they have been hitting profit targets and you guys know who you are. Uh, you need to be setting your take profit targets, okay? Uh, or hold it, no crying, no whining over this little dip. Uh, take your profit targets. We do, you know, we outline, I outline them very carefully. Take profit one, two, three, there's a screenshot. So, all right, you guys, thanks very much. I'll let you go. Uh, I'm going to go drink some DyQuil or something. And I actually have a call with a coaching student here um, at two. But I uh, wish you the best. I'll see you guys tomorrow in M3. We'll unpack this a little deeper. And then, of course, see you on Thursday for Retire Rich. Cheers, everyone. Take care.